Okay, in today's vlog we will be talking about Kodak Folding Brownie. As you know, in my previous vlogs I was praising this camera and consequently few of you have bought it. Some of my patrons have bought it and uh, I decided to make this vlog about how this camera works. And actually I bought um, two, two extras and then when I received it I saw a few of the... Uh, I saw this one is, um, it needs some maintenance work. So, you know, this video will be very useful for that too. To inspect it and fix some things that are not working. Okay, here is a knob. You press it and it opens. These are um, hinges that are lock, locked. And now, this bottom part, you slide uh, has to be totally open, yeah. And now you slide it on forward. Okay, here, this is now very important. Now you need to pull it, and you see this. This is a locking system, this is a focusing system. Comes here and locks. So this is meant to be to go forward. Don't do it like this. This has to be extended all the way to the end. You see? It stops. This is how it should be. Don't do it like this. Otherwise, your photo. If you do it like this, your fo photos will be out of focus. Okay, so that's first thing. In the back, to open the back, you have another knob here and another knob here, and you press both of them at the same time. Pop, and it opens. Here on this side, you have a window. Uh, through which um, in the old days they could see the number of the photo being shot. This, you have to tape it. Just scotch tape and that's it. Yeah, and also here, you have to tape this. It's a very simple camera, but in my opinion it's ingenious model, but it's very delicate. Let me show you the focusing system. This is focusing system. We have feet and meters. Okay, let's say we have we are shooting a landscape photo. So we go to 100 feet or 30 meters. We press it and we slide. And now this is very important. You see this slider it has to come down and lock. Now it's locked, and this has to be in a lock extended position too. You see, it should not be like this. It should be like this. If we would like to shoot, uh, let's say, a portrait on uh, six feet or about two and a half meters, we would extend it all the way till the end or to the forward and then move this knob, extend the lens here and we'll lock again. Tick. See? Tick. If we want to do a, I don't know, like a shot on five meters, we would pull it back on five meters and then we will come down and lock again. You see? And a shutter you have three options. One is T, B and I. I is uh, for daylight, just like, I'm not sure what time is this, but it's around 60th of a second. B is bulb, you press it, you hold it. You release it, it closes. And T is what I usually use. I, you press, expose five seconds, turn, turn it off. Here's the aperture, but be careful of those numbers. It starts with four and it finishes at 128. I guarantee you this fully open is not F4. What I have learned or calculated is that fully open aperture is actually f11. And then, I don't know, maybe 128 is, is real. But my point is, uh, you know, this is unreliable. Uh, George Eastman knew what he was doing. He just wrote f4, although there is, <laughs> there is no f4 there. <laughs> okay, this is how you, you frame. You look through the viewfinder or... And then... And um, for this is horizontal frame and vertical frame. 
and if you're doing vertical you turn it like that great isn't it let's inspect now this camera that I bought so when you open it first of all some savage broke in so this knob is not working anymore another one hinge is missing this focusing system is bent you see this shouldn't be like that this should be it should be like this you see totally flat and not like this and not like this to start photographing you have to glue this window and I advise you this is a metal if you're gonna use wet play collodion after a few plates you will have this situation you see this is all rust before and after so to protect your uh, camera you can use uh, renaissance wax but you have to do it often every week or so every few plates you have to wax it so it's repulsive to water and silver in trade of course so uh, but if I'm honest this rust I love it it's a trademark of my plates it's very interesting one thing because the plate is actually pressed the contamination from the rust and uh, it doesn't get on the top on the middle of the plate it, it remains at the border that's why my plates are, are great okay I hope you like this vlog it's very didactic it's very uh, focused on this camera if you own it then you learn a lot about it if not maybe you will buy it it's very cheap and it's very good in my previous vlog I show you how to use paper negatives and how can you play around with this it's great and I have a hint I will feature this camera more in my vlogs and my work thank you for watching and if you want me to do more about this uh, top shit bypass of um, analog photography how to do analog photography more affordable way and and but just as creative or even more creative than going the mainstream um, you know maybe you can support me with uh, I don't know uh, a cup of tea every month maybe you can become my patron at patreon.com slash bordpetrlin either way <laughs>